Today we're going to be talking about why the 2023 NFL Draft class is insane. Now you guys may be wondering, now what is this guy talking about? Why is it insane? In a good way or a bad way? I'm going to tell you, it is unreal. It is stacked with talent. And even in the second round, you will find yourself getting good value if you're an NFL GM. I'm really impressed with the players that I've seen so far. And it's not a lot. It's around 70. And this is not my final board at all. It's just the players that I have seen so far, right? So we're going to be talking about a, a few players that really do intrigue me. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll tell you why. The 2023 NFL Draft is insane. So we're starting off with as it just randomly shifts to Q34, but we're starting off with the depth at the quarterback class. It's just unreal. They're not the most talented players, but C.J. Stroud, he is my number two player in the class. Just looks unbelievable this year. And his game against a team. I, I forgot. I, I forgot what team it was. Arkansas State, that's right. But Marvin Harrison Jr. looked awesome. Amika, Amike, Amiki, it's, it's one of those, th like, three that I just said. Egbuka looked so awesome as well. But C.J. Stroud is a guy who's going to throw the ball accurately. Big arm, can move the ball down the field. I don't care how big your arm is. What makes a team win? A quarterback and a team that can work together to push the ball down the field. You don't need continuous, tremendous, big plays. Obviously, that would help. But Stroud's a guy, just like Caleb Williams at USC 2024, one of my favorite players in college football, he can move the football down the field. Really good at accurate thrower. Not the best athlete, right, but still a really good player in general. Bryce Young did not look good against Texas. He had his moments where he just didn't do too great. I think Stroud's the more accurate player. I think Stroud's going to be better in the NFL. I think Stroud has more upside than Bryce Young. I, I thought for a second there, like in my quarterback rankings, I thought that Bryce Young was better, but his deep accuracy is like really inconsistent, and I don't like that. Will Levis, Getting a lot of opportunities to throw this year, of course, like down the field, maybe moving the ball down the field because he doesn't have Wandale Robinson, continuous screen guy, RPO guy. You know, he can actually throw the football and watch his team win. I think Will Levis is going to be a stud this year, and I think he's going to be studying the NFL. Only thing is, he is 24 years old. That's concerning. Anthony Richardson, a guy who I love a lot, but... Other than his upside, there's nothing, like, too amazing about him other than his speed. Like, he is so fast. But I'm not going to be the guy who's going to say, oh, you should play running back, you should play receiver. Because he's a good thrower, really big arm, but he has really inconsistent accuracy. And until that is fixed, I don't think I can, I can consider him as a top three quarterback, right now at least. Tyler Van Dyke. Another guy who just, like, shows his flashes of potential. I haven't quite seen him yet in the 2022 season, but based on his 2021 tape, pretty good player. And then Tanner McKee's in here because I saw him. He's not very good, honestly. Then this running back class may be one of the best I've seen since maybe 2020. Bijan Robinson, top four player. In fact, let me pull up my official board. Uh, this is how it looks like. Bijan Robinson, number four player in the class. Stroud, number two. But Bijan Robinson, unbelievable. He has great vision as a running back. So good. Zach Evans is one of my favorite players, period, in college football. He, he's so unstoppable, so underrated at TCU, transferred to Ole Miss, getting a ton of carries. But here's the thing, I don't care. If you get 24 carries like Tank Bigsby... And then you average like 3.5 to 4.5 yards per carry. It's not good. Zach Evans can average way more than that. Such a good runner. And has the power and speed element. Zach Evans is going to be really good in the NFL. Now guys like Jameer Gibbs and Kenny McIntosh currently on their teams uh, are being used as receiving backs. Really fast dudes. like Especially after the catch. But Gibbs... I, I would love to see him get more running snaps. Can like If he bursts out, you're, no one's going to catch him. If he gets tremendous blocking, super fast. But 
he doesn't average like a lot per carry. He's that guy who has like three or four runs that really boost up his yards per carry, which is kind of concerning for me. And then Kenny McIntosh is literally the re leading receiver on Georgia's team. But he's not getting a lot of running snaps at all. He's only getting like three or four carries per game, if I'm not mistaken. I would love to see him get more snaps because I think if he gets more snaps at running back and catches the way he does, he could be even ahead of Jameer Gibbs because Gibbs is not getting those kinds of carries. But McIntosh right now, I don't see him slotting into the NFL like very well because he doesn't run a lot as a running back, and you would expect him to, but he really doesn't. Now, outside receiver, slot receiver. Jackson Smith and Jigba, I'm not falling off of him just yet. Did get injured, but I, I think he's still a really good player when healthy. Jordan Addison. This guy literally killed the team USC was playing. Was it Stanford? He killed them, roasted them over a fire. And who was the corner he was against? It was I, I believe it was Q Blue. Q. Bu Kelly, one of the best corners apparently in college football in this class as well. I haven't actually put him on here. He's a good corner, right? But Jordan Addison legitimately roasted him over a fire, cooked him, and ate him up. And then, of course, you also got Mario Williams, not to be confused with Mario Williams, the former number one overall pick. Mario Williams also lit up Stanford as well. And Jordan Addison, so underrated. I, I think he's so good. And I think he's better than Kayshawn Boutte. I really like Kayshawn Boutte coming out of LSU, uh, coming out of his sophomore or junior year, whichever one it is. He's a good player, real explosive after the catch, but isn't getting much targets. And in a run-heavy offense with guys like Jaden Daniels, I don't know what he's going to do for that team. And I feel like he's just a solid player, and I think a lot of people can overtake him with the potential that they have such as Josh Downs, got injured in his first game, unfortunately, but was so good in the snaps that he got. Such good hands, ability to get open. It's like the dream if you're, you know, a receiver fan. Cedric Tillman is having a big year for Tennessee this year. Just another guy who's really solid, like Keishon Butte. A guy who can just, you know, catch screens, run routes. That's really what he is like. You know, just a solid player. Dante Demas Jr., one of my favorite players, another guy, one of my favorite players in college football. It's like this is the peak of college football entertainment, unless you count like when you had Reggie Bush, Vince Young, like guys like that in college. That was like the peak as well, but I guess. But this is another peak, I guess. This is just such a good draft class. And Dante Demas Jr., if he stays healthy, unreal. He's like 6'4". 210, 220, but the amount of, not separation, but the amount of speed he has after the catch is unreal. And Tawia Tagovailoa is also pretty underrated, just, you know, not as good as other quarterbacks. Quentin Johnston, a guy who I think a lot of people just forgot about. You just, another guy who's just so explosive as a receiver uh, up top. De dealt with horrible quarterback play last year. Whoever that was, I, I don't know what his name was, so terrible. But I, I believe he's still the starting quarterback there for TCU, though, unfortunately. But Johnston's really, really good. Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jermaine Burton, two really good, solid players. Smith and Jigba has the potential to be better. That's the only reason why he's ahead of Burton right now. Michael Mayer, like, he's just a solid tight end. He's going to get open, going to catch the ball. And is pretty, like, dominant after the catch. Not fast, not particularly that athletic, but, you know, like, pretty good after the catch, nonetheless. Arik Gilbert is a really good athlete when he played for LSU, like, the limited snaps that he saw. He was so good, but he's not playing. A lot of people would have him over Michael Mayer. Like I said, though, not playing, you cannot be high. If you're not getting those snaps that you need, how can you be drafted in the first round? It just doesn't make sense. Jaheim Bell was, I believe, the leading rusher in the South Carolina game this past week. A guy who was just used, like, all over the offense last week. I don't know. Spencer Rattler is also looking, like, okay, I guess. I, I don't even know. Paris Johnson Jr., first year starting at left tackle, looked pretty good. Uh, Broderick Jones, guy who can, like, he goes up the field and blocks. Like, he's good at that. But... 
I think there's a guy who's better, and that's in the 2024 class, actually. I don't know if I can get it. Yeah, right here. The 2024 official board, another big class. Amarius Smims in high school, so good. So good. Don't know if he's going to be that good in college, but, I mean, unbelievable. I'm going to let me say, let me tell you. Jalen Duncan, anyways, Jalen Duncan, um, showed flashes in his uh, previous season. Could be really, really good. Peter Skaronsky, I think I, I, I think I'm the only one who thinks he's, like, bad. Legitimately. He cannot handle, you know, edge rushers with great bursts. And that is legitimately almost every good pass rusher in the NFL. He is going to be a bust if you take him that high. You, he is a second to third round talent and cannot handle guys like Bill Anderson Jr. Trust me, if you think Peter Skronsky is a top 10 guy, put him against Will Anderson Jr., the most dominant player in college football, no question about it. He will let up like 20,364 sacks in one game. I have no question about it. He is good, but cannot handle people who are screaming off the edge. And then Zion Nelson, a player who we thought was going to be really good last year, I don't know how good he's going to be this year either. Andrew Voorhees is really, really underrated. I even underrated him, but he's looking pretty good for USC this this you know this year so far. Jared Patterson, right now, according to me, is the best center. Ignore Layden Robinson. I saw him on, like, the mock draft databases board, and I thought, okay, this guy's going to be a stud, and he really wasn't. I don't know. And then a guy who's super underrated, Daywan Jones from Ohio State. Super, like, big guy. And he uses his size to, like, push s speedy defenders. He's one of those, not mauling, per se, but just a big guy in general. And then a guy who also can do that, who I will add to this list, is Robert Scott Jr. Very, very underrated. Just n not athletic. He is going to run like a 5 7 40 yard dash. He is super slow. I'll put him I'll put him right here. You know what? I'm going to put Laughing Ransom over Tanner McKee. And then I'll put Robert Scott Jr. there. But Robert Scott Jr., great pass protector uh, for Florida State. I think he can be good, right? Just, again, not very athletic. As, yes, if you do not know, I know nearly all FBS, I think actually all FBS uh, school mascots, logos, whatever you call them. Jalen Carter. If not for Will Anderson Jr., I would have put him at number one. It's really weird, right? Because I have CJ Stroud separating the two. It's either Will Anderson Jr. one, Stroud two, Carter three, or Carter one, Stroud two, and Anderson three. It, I, that's how I think of it, at least. Jalen Carter is unbelievable. So good. Look at him against Oregon. He was literally pushing the entire pocket, and he's only one guy. A guy who can, I think who could also do what he's doing and even be better in the 2024 draft, Damon Payne Jr., so good at high school. And then Javon Dexter, a pass rushing guy primarily, but rushes off the interior, so I would consider him a D-tackle. <coughs> Excuse me. But remember, these positions are not finalized, but this is the position that I think they would be best at in the NFL. So guys like Brian Breezy, who is a tough player, but usually eats up blocks, doesn't really get pressure, and a good run stopper. Probably he's going to be a better nose tackle. And then Siaki Ika uses his size, really, to get along. I think he's criminal, like overrated like quite a bit. But he can be a really good nose tackle, if necessary. Guy like Derek Brown, but not nearly as good as Derek Brown. Tyree Wilson, very big potential guy. Could be really good for Texas Tech this year. So awesome last year for Ty uh, Texas Tech, really. Tyree Wilson could be easily a mid-first-round pick to early-first-round pick. Miles Murphy, B.J. Ojolari, Felix Anandike Uzuma. Okay, you guys don't know this guy. He is the best. O'Shawn Mathis from Nebraska. No, he's not the best, but he is not the worst. Go look at his film against Northwestern, and you will be pretty impressed, honestly. 
I was impressed with what I saw from O'Shawn Mathis, and I think he's a third-round talent, fourth-round talent. Don't be surprised if he goes that high, but I think he should get drafted. So underrated. Felix and Adike Uzuma, very technical player, not particularly athletic by any means, but guy you can just get after the passer really. BJ Ojulari, people forget how good he is. He's not like so good that he's like obviously top ten, but still a solid, solid, solid player for LSU and could be really good in the NFL. In Miles Murphy, guy who can run stop off the edge and then apply as much pressure as he does. He's a super, super talented player. Noah Sewell, pretty good player. I just, I, I don't really know what to say about him. He's just the best inside linebacker in the draft. Henry to Ota O, another guy who's just a solid player. Justin Flo, big athletic, big athlete, big hit, all, never can stay healthy. If he can stay healthy and if he can wrap up a bit more securely, man, Justin Flo, easy top 10 pick. Not even lying. His athleticism, his hit power, and maybe if he just wrapped up a bit more then stayed healthy. Big thing. Justin Flo could be so good. Really have high expectations for him this year. Looked really good against uh, Georgia in some snaps. Uh, some snaps. Some snaps he didn't really look that good. Will Anderson Jr., most dominant player in college football. Unbelievable player, man. Honestly. Honestly, you like see him and then you think, oh, this guy's not that good. And then you see other pass rushers and then you think Will Anderson Jr. is the best player of all time. That's what I thought. I thought Will Anderson Jr. was super overrated. But he is always in the backfield. Whether that's tackle for loss, sacking, pressurizing, always pushing the pocket off, his, off the edge. And I've seen him drop in the coverage. He's not that bad. Very good tackler. Such a big burst. Like I said, if you had, if you match up Peter Skaronsky and Will Anderson Jr., not even a match. Trenton Simpson, really exciting player for Clemson. A guy like Isaiah Simmons, just primarily like an edge rusher linebacker, where while Isaiah Simmons was linebacker safety and played both positions better than what Simpson can do at his respective positions. Isaiah Foskey, big speed rusher, I think, or big athlete, not even a speed rusher, more of a power guy, but is completely mauled off the edge. Same thing with Nolan Smith last year. Isaiah Foskey this year. They both, they, they just have to stop getting dominated. Andre Carter II looks so athletic, so fast. He's 6'7". Imagine being that big, yet being able to rush that fast. Super, super good. Obviously plays against Army, so he's not facing great competition, but could be super, super good. And Derek Hall, guy who I think is really underrated, pressurizes the quarterback really well. Not that great of an athlete. Not the best, but not the worst. Uh, Cam Smith, super underrated. Another guy, like, this class is so good, dude. But Cam Smith, Kelly Ringo, both really good players in coverage. I, I think Ringo, though, relies less on his athleticism and more on his, like, physicality, which is a con of that I had of Sauce Gardner in 2020. Not 2021, 2020. But Kelly Ringo is not going to let you down in coverage. Just not doesn't use what I think could be really good athleticism. Cam Smith, super good in coverage. I've, I've heard that he wasn't really good in 2020. I didn't see his film, but if that's true, the improvement was drastic. One The best cover corner in the draft, in my opinion, at, at least. And then has great ball skills as well. Um, Christian Gonzalez, you would see him and you think, oh, small guy, not going to let, uh, he's going to let up quite a bit. Actually, he's 202 pounds. I thought he was like 170 when I first saw him. He's 202 pounds, great athlete, and doesn't let you down in coverage. What else could you want out of a corner? He is the perfect corner for any team that wants just a guy who's not going to let you down. Christian Gonzalez is that guy. Eli Ricks didn't play. But so good at LSU. And then the final guy who we're going to be talking about is going to be Devin Witherspoon out of Illinois. Um, no one talks about him. But he's by far the best player on that Illinois team. Not even close. Maybe you sneak in Chase Brown, maybe. But I think it's Devin Witherspoon hands down. Just so good in coverage. Bad ball skills. Bad. 
But Antonio Johnson versus the defensive back, really good. I've seen him line up and pressurize the quarterback as well. Same thing with Brian Branch. Could also line up in the D-line or as a nickel corner. Malachi Moore's so good if he's healthy. He's just almost never is, which is really depressing because he's really, really good. And then Laffin Ransom was definitely not a versatile defensive back. I'll push him to free safety. Good tackler, really. Good run support guy. JL Skinner, solid player. Same thing with Jordan Battle. And then Brandon Joseph has really good range as a player. Pretty good athlete. And then one of my favorite players in college football, another guy. Jalen Catalan. Big run support safety. Big hitter. Just a solid player in general. But overall, this is just me talking about the 2023 class. And I legitimately talked for 20 minutes. That's how much I can say about this class. Because it's so fun. 2024 is going to be even better. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one.